All right, this is the Sage Wanderer coming at you from deep in the heart of Antifa country, 45 miles from Portland, Oregon. So, um, what would a civil war look like? A lot of people are talking about civil war. The United Nations even off, uh, even served up a warning to the international community that the United States was already in a civil war and that civil war conditions were currently in place. So a lot of us have studied the Civil War, um, you know, the North against the South. Geographically divided nation with states independently seceding from the Union. I do not believe that that's the kind of Civil War that is brewing. The kind of Civil War that is brewing is much more closely related to what is referred to historically as a Bolshevik Revolution kind of like the Arab Spring. It's when protests evolve into violent mobs who then go on the rampage against their perceived enemies. Uh, you can see this already occurring with Antifa and mixed with Black Lives Matter. Mainly, I, I target Antifa. Uh, they're, uh, that's because you know, what is going on here in Portland is Antifa-based. So what they do is they, they target the police. If they can find some Nazis, if they can find some white supremacists, in fact, if they can find anybody who'll stand up to them and fight them back and argue with them and defend, you know, basic American decency, then they'll call you a Nazi and they'll attack you. Devoid of being offered that kind of target, when they assemble, their next target is the police not always wise and hats off to the Portland Police Department who's learning uh, on the job how to control these mobs and I'm doing a really good job of it lately um, but then they turn their sights on corporate America they attack that's why they attack Starbucks and they, they, they go there and they drink the coffee they give them their money you know they probably got a Starbucks coffee back with their stuff where they got changed into their costume but uh, you know it represents corporate America they attack banks so, what we're seeing here develop is a class war. Now, I think it's because of the destruction of our economy. You know, if people had jobs and were making money, they'd spend all their time making money, and they spend the rest of the time spending their money. And that's kind of what America is all about. Work hard, play hard, have a good time. But when you don't have a job, or any job you get is not enough to live on, you get a lot of time on your hands. Now, being a musician, I worked mainly, you know, I had a lot of time off. And uh, I could spend that time making music, but ultimately I spent a lot of that time on myself, becoming a better human being, spiritually, mentally, all of that. You know, study, self-discipline, all of that. Um, but when you don't have time on your, we have a lot of time on your hands and you don't have a job. I mean, you know, the idle hands are the devil's workshop so I'm with Trump on one area then when he said you know that he thought he could bring the nation to a better race relation if we got them jobs and that sounded kind of crazy but it makes sense because when you're busy working and living having a good life you don't have time to complain so these mobs are going to develop into something else you know into bigger groups bigger mobs uh, this mob violence is going to spill out into neighborhoods. If you can get an Antifa talking, and due to my long hair and my love of the ganja and my musician status and a few other things, uh, when all this started happening, I was friends with people who were becoming Antifa. And once they got brainwashed, I really couldn't be friends with them anymore because they were immune to any reason. And when you get those people talking about what Antifa is really all about it's a Bolshevik communist revolution it's class warfare their attitude is why should you have a big old house and a boat and a motorhome when I ride a bicycle to work and five of us are shacked up in a one-bedroom apartment I can see their frustration <laughs> and it used to be if you were if you lived like that it was because you were lazy or something was wrong with you but now people live like that because they can't get good jobs. Get us jobs and there won't be a civil war. 
but it may be too late for that. You know, the seed is planted, the poison is already, you know, gelling in the container, and it's just a matter to, of time till it spews out on all of America. So if you get them talking, they refer to something that they call the purge, and it's based on the purge movie. Um, instead of organizing a rally to bust out windows and fight with the police, you know, one of these days they will silently slip into your neighborhood. They'll open your window. They'll come into your bedroom and they'll cut your throat while you're sleeping. That's their plan. A purge. Small bands of angry, violent, armed, hateful people who are ready to come and take your wealth and your riches. There's a lot of top talk about secession from the Union by California right now. Texas is always talking about secession. I lived there, I used to, you know, lived there a long time. I know Texans. But here, um, it's a little different because, you know, the government's on their side. And they, they just basically see the small minority of people who don't, don't agree with the far-left agenda, agenda of most, you know, unfortunately, Portland Oregonians um, as the enemy in their midst. And uh, since they probably don't want to go to Texas and fight, <laughs> don't recommend that, or, you know, they don't have any other choice, so they're going to single out people and they don't care that you're not a racist. They don't care that you're not a Nazi. They don't care that you, uh, they don't even care if you're in an interracial marriage. That doesn't buy you a, a, you know, a black person to them can be a Nazi. Really, Nazi is just code for anyone that doesn't agree with them. And so, what I'm afraid will happen is that a purge will occur probably in Portland, potentially in Seattle where these large mobs will break up into small groups and they will attack the rich neighborhoods. They will take what's in the house. They will burn what they don't want. Um, eventually that could morph into them claiming a house or a government building as their headquarters and just taking it over. Local police departments won't be able to stop those purge activities. It won't be one central purge, it'll be nights of purges. This is quite frightening to those of us who are not on the far left. You know, to give you an idea who I am, I voted for Obama, and I voted for, uh, I was a supporter of Bernie Sanders, and uh, he got deep sixed by the DNC, and I'll never vote for a Democrat again because of that. I would be completely a liberal except I kind of I still believe in, in a reduced size in government and the Second Amendment is a big thing with me it's why in my youth I voted exclusively for Republicans I was defending this the Second Amendment so I'm a constitutionalist I'm a libertarian but that kind of makes me left of center right of center depend on your perspective they don't like people like me because I'm not on their side, and I'm referring to Antifa. They don't like people like me because I'm not on their side. If you get to talking to an Antifa member, he wants people like me dead. He wants me dead, and he wants to split up his stuff amongst his comrades. These people are hard right, uh, left-wing communist agitators. And I'm deep behind enemy lines here. <laughs> civil war is not going to be civil. This is not going to be a war fought amongst armies. This is going to be a war of purging people from your midst who are different from you. Now, I'm not leaving the South and the right-wingers and the Texans out of this because Austin is a hotbed of this kind of thinking and attitude, and Antifa is there. And you will see a reverse purge committed by law enforcement in those areas. They will take out people who they think will purge, or, or who attempt to purge uh, with great prejudice. So, hopefully law and order will be able to stand up to these mobs, but I don't think that it will here in Portland. I think that the Portland police, the government here, you know, is, is going to be overwhelmed by these people. So what you'll see is a backlash. Not everybody's hard to kill if Antifa comes to purge me. They better bring an army. I'm going to defend myself. 
That's another thing I did with a lot of my free time, is got good at defending myself. More videos on that later. But, um, this is going to be a real ugly civil war. It's impossible pr to predict how it will come out. I think the states will fight amongst themselves within their own state before they start a, a fight with the federal government. I think what you're seeing now is the beginning of the purge. It's dark. You know, I've been studying Antifa, and I've seen videos of them stalking people they don't like. Mostly people who take their picture. Mostly people who videotape their activities. They target them. They intimidate them. They follow them around in these little groups, and it looks like the purge. It's just like the movie. Look no further than the, dis the destruction and vandalism on the Lincoln Memorial where expletives were written in red spray paint, uh, spray paint on the columns that very much resembled imagery from a Purge movie. This is their plan. It is frightening. Arm yourself. I'm thinking about leaving the state or at least going east of the mountains, but I'm kind of hooked in here. So maybe I'll just write it out and see what it's like. This is what the Civil War will look like. Chaos, murder, blood in the streets. This is a pitchfork, sticks and stones kind of fight. Mob rule. Are you ready for it? If not, you better be.